34 of the 71 NBA championships won by two teams. Both have always been star dynasty driven. Find they play physical. Voices. They play physical, Maddie. At the end of the day, you need another star. Right. This is a star's league. I need a co-star for Kate Cunningham. Kate Cunningham's best fit in the NBA draft. Uh, I've been thinking about this a lot. I actually, uh, I was part of a few conversations last week uh, with Woodward Pistons. And they were talking to me about Kate Cunningham and who the best fit is. Uh, the name Jaden Ivey uh, is at the top of most Pistons fans' boards. Uh, they do want Jaden Ivey, a strong off-ball guard who can play with the ball also, get a bucket. Uh, Benedict Matherin is another another kid out of Arizona, I believe, who is, that is Arizona. extremely talented. We talk about talented players in the draft. He's up there on the list. And then there's the anomaly, right? The, the player, the data point in the draft that... You're just not sure of, right? It's that stock that's just sitting there. And it's either going to skyrocket up and you're going to make a lot of money or it's going to plummet and you're going to lose your whole you lose your whole investment. And that's Shaden Sharp, right? Top recruit coming out of high school. Right. Didn't play his first year in college. And where is he going to go? It's reported that the Kings are trying to trade out of four. And that's likely where Ivy would go. What does that mean for the Pistons? And when we talk about best fit for Cade, at the end of the day, Terry, this is, I, don't, I don't need to tell you about how they would play together, whether they would fit or not. At the end of the day, you need another star. Right. This is a star's league. And when we get to 915 and I tell you about all the champions in NBA history and why it's so difficult to win a championship, they all have one common theme, star-driven. 34 of the 71, that's almost half, 34 of the 71 NBA championships won by two teams. Both have always been star dynasty driven. You and need a star. it's easier for one of them, at least, to get stars. Yes. Absolutely, in Los and Angeles. Other, and Boston has a hard time getting stars. And they stars. won 11 of them early, right? Right. So, but to the point, you need a star. Whether it's Benedict Matherin, whether you think it's Keegan Murray, Jaden Ivey, I don't care. That's fine. Everybody can have their own opinion this morning. I'm willing to accept everybody's opinion. As long as we can all agree, you need to go for a star player. You're not going for a role player. You're not looking for a nice, a nice complimentary player to Sadiq Bey and Cade Cunningham. Sadiq Bey, right now, his trajectory is to be a very elite number three in the NBA. He's not a number two. A number two is a co-star. I need a co-star for Cade Cunningham. Can I get him in free agency? Probably not. When's the last time Detroit ever signed a top five, top ten player in free agency? Oh, wait. F***ing never. How about never? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get a little frustrated sometimes, sir. I, I think the guy with the most talent and the most, I would say, off-the-cuff skills would be Jay Nivey. Now, there are rumors now, you know, before he was a certain, he was certain he was going to be there at five. Now you're hearing he may not be. It looks like Sacramento's trying to trade out. Uh, they're not happy about his response and interaction with them. He reportedly said, I don't want to play in Sacramento. I refuse to play for your franchise. Good. So I don't blame him. Sacramento is the, what the Detroit Lions have been from, 1963 up until two years ago, maybe. Sacramento's worse. You know why? It's in the middle of nowhere. You may as well be playing for the Siberian Sea Wolves. They're because a great team. What what GMs do, like if one of their players shows out and gets all pissy, first thing a GM is say, okay, send your ass to Sacramento. See how you like that. And they go, oh my, oh my god, I'll behave now. Don't don't do that to me. So. Nobody wants to play in Sacramento. It's it is a cow town. I was just I don't want to call it a cow town. I mean, you can even look back is. to the Pistons championships. Go to the Bad Boy Pistons era. Three finals appearances, correct? Correct. Two championships. Yes, sir. They had stars on that team. Isaiah Thomas, the clear number one. Joe Dumars was a co-star. He was. That's mm -hmm. a typical number two you want in the NBA. Bill Ambeer, a star. Dennis Rodman, a rising star. 
Those were star. That was a star-studded team. You know, they get a bad knock because of the bad boy perception. But boy, that was a talented team. Boy, they were putting up buckets every night. They weren't just a defensive team. I punch you in the face, close on you when you attack the basket. That was, that was not what they were. They were one of the better teams in basketball. And you know who was not a star but became a star during the playoffs? John Sally. During the regular season, it was like, all right, dude, he, you're kind of a waste of space. But then when the playoffs began, he was just an entirely different dude. He could score all of a sudden. He was always a, a very good shot blocker, good defender, didn't always play smart, but it was like he was locked in and focused into something. He became another dude. And Brandon uh, disagrees, uh, like usual. Bill Ambeer was not a star. He, uh, he was, that's a horrible take. He was just a solid role player. Bill Ambeer was not a solid role player. He was a star at his position. He's not a superstar. He's not the guy you build your team around. But he, he was one of the better centers in the NBA, top four, top five. For an extended period of time. That's and, a start. And, and you know what he used to do? He used to get on people's nerves, get them off their game, and uh, he would take the pressure off of Isaiah and Joe Dumars and, and just be the jerk. Uh, I, I remember uh, in the finals against Portland, Portland had a, a good center, Kevin Duckworth. He was good. He was a little fat. He was a little roly-poly. He was like Madison's type. She would have liked him. But um, Bill Lambert used to mess with this dude so much. Uh, he couldn't focus. Uh, he was stepping the lane on free throws because he was worried about Bill Lambert. So Lambert did things that people didn't see unless you were following them I'll closely. tell you what's not a star player, right? Bill Lambert, 17 and 12, 17 and 12, 16 and 13, 15 and 12, 14 and 10, 14 and 10, 12 and 10, 11 and 10. That was from 1984, 83 to 1990, their last championship. Yeah, not a star. Okay. Where do we find these people? I, I think you can um, define things the way that you want. Not, not you, but just in general. Somebody could look at a 17-point score and say, role player. Or somebody could look at a 17 Is point Draymond Green player a star? and say, that's another one. I want to know. The, she says no. You're, you're, you're dumb. Sorry, Maddie. No, I say yes, but Thank there's you. a lot of people who say no. And I think they're all dumb, and I'll tell you why. That's the definition of a star player. You excel at an elite level at your role. He wasn't just a role player. He was a star He's the star on the defensive side of the ball. Communication, leadership. He's actually sometimes, especially during the early days, was their primary ball handler. Of course, Draymond Green's a star. Ridiculous. Some people will say Dennis Rodman was not a star. See, I disagree, mm -hmm. and I think Dennis Rodman was a star because he was your most elite defender. He was the greatest rebounder in NBA history, arguably. I mean, what are we doing here? As if, like, the Pistons, the bad boy Pistons were this young, blue-collar team. They had no business winning. They didn't have star players, Adam. They weren't a good basketball team. But they played, where do you keep finding they all these physical. voices? They played physical, Maddie. They played physical. <laughs> you know who he is? I'm going to mention the name. He doesn't. He has no idea who this guy. This is Richard Little over here. Who? Richard Rich, Little? Rich Little. Not Richard. Rich. Oh. Rich Little? I don't know. He uh he did voices. That's who you are. Hello there, everybody. I'm a, I'm a rich little. Um, was I was Ben Wallace a star? Yes, but you can find people. Who I'm sure will we say can. I'm sure that we he can. was a role player because he couldn't score in a whorehouse. Oh man, I I can't believe this. Like that that is. Um, I mean, come on, Detroit. We're a smart smart sport, uh, sports town. Like, come on. You guys are better than this, especially about your own teams. Don't sit there and talk to me about the bad boy Pistons. Like, they were a bunch of scrubs, and it was just Isaiah and Joe, and they were really carrying the basketball team. It was Dennis, Joe, equally as important. Bill Lambert, equally as important. Unbelievable.